Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon and we're continuing with our Sun and Moon IRL deck analysis. Today is going to be a Quad Persimian. It's a very interesting archetype that is pretty much, it's in my eyes, it's the new age of Gyarados in that it's very um, quick to get set up and it can do a decent amount of output. It's sort of a halfway house between Night March and Gyarados because it doesn't hit too much. It's looking more for the two shot range, uh, whereas Night March and Gyarados would look for the one hit KOs. But this is very, very consistent at getting the two shots. So um, it's very easy to maintain and keep throughout the game. And um, it's one that I think maybe a few budget players will pick up and start playing because very easy to play. And um, it's probably just going to be a threat in the format because it's so consistent at what it does. So let's jump straight into it. First of all, we have three Mew. Mew has a couple of good roles in here. First of all, it's a free retreater, so it's obviously our best lead Pokemon throughout the games. And um, its ability allows us to copy the attacks of any of our basic Pokemon in play. So um, by using Mew, we actually gain an extra 30 damage essentially from our Persimian's attack. So with a full bench of four Persimian attacking with a Mew, we can do 130 damage. Uh, so that's really, really good. It means that we can KO Shamans. And we have comfortable two hit KOs even on GX Pokemon with those 250 uh, HP lines that we have to look for these days. So very, very good stuff. Using the Mew is really helpful. Obviously as well, if the Mew gets knocked out, it means that we maintain our Persimians on the bench so we don't lose any damage this way. So Mew is pretty much the main attacker alongside Persimian. Um, simply because it has 50 HP, sometimes it's best to go in early with this guy. And then because we have Fury Belt in here, we can use our Persimians later on with higher HP um, once the opponent's taken a few prizes to try and deny it from there because then their ends and stuff get less painful on our end. So Mew is a really nice attacker. It keeps our damage a little bit higher and it's a free retreater and all that good stuff. So next up, the main attacker of the deck is going to be Persimian. Um, we will have the links to all the um, scans and stuff in the description. So check out if you... Um, Want to have extra reference, but um, he has two attacks. Uh, one's for a fighting, and we don't play any fighting energy in this deck. It's all about his second attack for a double colorless energy, um, which does 10 base plus 30 more for each persimmon you have on your bench. So, as I mentioned with Mew, you have four on the bench, Mew in the active. Uh, with the 10 base, we're doing 130 for just a DCE. Very efficient stuff, and it's very easy to get four basic Pokemon out of the deck with such a powerful engine that we have. The amount of space that we have because all we really need to run energy wise is for DCE. So this is really cool. When he's in the active spot, um, you're doing 100 base, which again is oftentimes two shotting things quite comfortably. Uh, slap a fighting fury belt on this guy and we go up to 150 HP, which is really annoying and kind of tanky sometimes for a non EX. So uh, Persimian is very, very good in my opinion. Next up, we have one Oranguru. Oranguru is really helpful for aggressive decks like this one. Uh, because it's going to help us from things like N and Delinquent. Uh, we do have to be careful about our bench space. Obviously, we want as many Persimians as possible. But having the option to use a Ranguru is really nice. Again, the scans are going to be in the description. But his ability means that once during our turn, we are able to draw until we have three cards in our hand. So in the opening turns, this can help us give us an extra card here or there for cycle. Um, but overall, it's for the late game push where... Um, as long as we maintain Oranguru on the bench, we're going to be much safer from uh, the disruption the opponent can throw at us. It does have an attack for three colorless energy, so it's going to be very, very rare that we use this because we're, once again, all DC in this deck. But it does 60 plus 30 more for each, oh no, sorry, plus 20 more for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So not that strong. A lot of the time, it's just going to be Persimian, but um, bear that in mind. He does have a two retreat cost, so... Um, again, that's sometimes a worry, but overall, because we're playing so many revives in here anyway to recover our Persimians and our Muse, um, the one count is all we need really to get use out of him, in my opinion. So rounding out the Pokemon lineup, we're just playing two Shaman EX. There's been a debate I've had uh, whether or not to play two or three. Uh, at the moment, I'm just sticking with two, mainly because the bench has to be filled with other things a lot of the time. Even though we do play Skyfield, there'll be those annoying times when you've whiffed Skyfield and... Um, because you've gone aggressive with one or two Shaman in the early turns, it fits the spaces for Simians, so you end up losing damage. So right now I'm just sticking with the two Shaman, uh, but I could see because of the aggressive style of this deck, sometimes three may be more appropriate. 
Um, so yeah, have that in mind. But overall, just that set of ability is going to be really handy. Um, and of course, we're playing DCE, so Sky Return is always an option. On to the items now. We have one town map. Town map is obviously essential for plucking uh, Persimians out of your um, prizes. Additionally, getting things like Puzzle of Time or some of the one-offs that we play. It's going to be important to recycle these, so yeah, pretty good stuff. The one-off special charge is again obvious. I've mentioned a couple of times we're just playing DCE, so recycling these is going to be pretty crucial. We have Puzzle and we have Special Charge, so we should never be in too big of a worry, even though you could consider this being um, more resource heavy than something like Night March used to be, because Night March would guarantee like a DC is basically two prizes for Night March. For us, a DC isn't quite two prizes. We're looking for two hits. So um, it's more important for us to recycle our energy than it would be for Night March. So the single special charge is fine for now. Um, it's not out of the question that you might want to play two. Uh, we are playing one of Escape Rope. Escape Rope is our way around um, Jolteon EX as well as Giratina EX. Oh no, not Giratina. Um, it's just Jolteon really. But it's also um, going to help us retreat around the board as well like we say the oranguru if we start with a persimian and we want to attack with mew or if we start with anything that's not mew basically we can just rope into it we're also playing one float stone for extra retreating put this on oranguru most of the time that's pretty handy um so yeah bear those in mind next up we have three revive these are the nice generations revives um putting a basic pokemon immediately onto our bench from the discard pile um so that once our Persimians get targeted or KO'd, we can recycle them, maintain our damage output, keep recovering Mew as well as a very nice attacker. And also that Oranguru is also a tempting option as well to help us out in the late game for extra card draw, stuff like that. I have debated changing one of these to Buddy Buddy Rescue to sometimes get use out of Shaman. I've not pulled the trigger on it just yet, but that's definitely an avenue you could look to uh, change up the deck. Next up, we are playing three Acrobike. Uh, it's just fitting the role of we're trying to be quick, trying to get our setup going, turn one as often as possible. So uh, that seems pretty important to me. Let's make sure that's in shot. Uh, then we have four trainers mail. Again, same thing really. We have so many space for uh, trainer cards in here. You can see we're playing three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, Pokemon and four DCE. So the rest is all just things that we can get from trainers mail. So it n basically never whiffs with this deck. So pretty awesome stuff. Next up we have four of the new ball search card, Nest Ball. Nest Ball allows us to search the deck for a basic Pokemon and immediately put it onto our bench. No questions asked. So again, this is going to be really nice for the turn one. Try and find as many Persimian as possible. Even try and get Oranguru. Pretty ha helpful stuff. It gets everything but Shaman basically because if Shaman goes straight to the bench we can't set up. But yeah, the four count means that we can always get into our monkeys quite quickly to start, start getting that high damage output. Then we are playing the full Ultra Ball as well. So 8 Ball cards means we're very easily going to be able to maintain and get this um, damage going as quickly as possible. And it means we can also access Shaman quite quickly. Then we are going to be playing 4 VS Seeker. Standard stuff really. Uh, recycle all of our supporters. One of the big ones we try and use is teammates. So spamming teammates over and over means we can guarantee DCE, guarantee our next attacker. Stuff like that is going to be pretty important. From there we are playing... Uh, for Puzzle of Time. Puzzle is going to help recycle our Pokemon alongside the Revive, but mainly it's going to be recycling DC to maintain our attackers once again, so all pretty good stuff there. It does mean that we can recycle some of these one ofs as well, Escape Rope, Special Charge. It means we can get away with just having the one count and uh, really make full use out of them. From there we are playing three Fighting Fury Belt. Um, at the moment I'm playing a Fury Belt build um, because I just like having the high HP um, Persimians. I've also toyed around with having four Bursting Balloons in this list um, because if you're doing 130 with a Mew, you put a Bursting Balloon on, basically they can't attack into you a lot of the time because um, obviously it ends up that they knock themselves out a lot of the time. So I've thought about going both directions. At the moment I'm happier with the Fury Belt build. I think just a 150 HP Persimian often gets a lot of value. You get two for ones all the time basically. As long as they can't respond with a one hit KO, which is quite often to be fair. Um, so right now I'm happy with Fury Belt, but I could also see being a bit more aggressive with Balloons also being a decent option. Um, so yeah, toy around with either one. I think they're both very viable. For now, I'm happy with the Fury Belt build. On to our supporters. We are playing 1N. Uh, we are very aggressive with this deck, so 
Most of the time we don't need end too much, but it's going to help us stabilise. Unlike Night March, the games do go a little bit longer than four turns, so um, the opponent does have the option to start taking prizes of their own. Normally though, because it's so easy for us to maintain attackers, we can try and you know get our one DC on board, then go for the end, hope the opponent can't draw out, stuff like that. We have the one Hex, otherwise things like Decidueye and Greninja would just completely carve through us, so we need to Hex these sorts of things. And um, it's really important if someone gets an item lock on us that we can Hex and try and start motoring through. Um, honestly though, I don't think we have a great matchup against any item lockers. Uh, two Lysander, it's going to help us be aggressive as possible. Um, dealing with Shaman is great when we are with Mew. Also, it is important for us to attack with Mew, so... so if we're able to um, KO Garbodors and Mucks um, with a 3 bench and we actually attack with the Persimian thanks to the 10 base damage, we are able to overcome Garb and Muck quite comfortably. So the 2 count of Lysander is pretty important. I've already mentioned Teammates as an important card. I really like the Teammates engine, just like how it's uh, functioned in Night March and with Gyarados in the past. Teammates is going to be a really important option here so that we can guarantee ourselves DCE uh, revive these sorts of cards help us get into our puzzle combos it's just really really powerful in this deck because you don't need much to maintain the game really you just need an extra dce most of the time uh, from there we have the four professor sycamore it's still the best turn one supporter that we can go for really um because it's just very very strong and uh gets us into a whole load of cards etc from there we are playing a three count of skyfield i hope you can all see that um the three count is quite high um, I orig originally started with two, uh, but I found that I had to puzzle back quite a few times. Puzzling back Skyfield doesn't feel that strong. Um, it's important to have a counter stadium for Parallel City, so that's the main reason why I'm playing the full three count. Obviously, having the three count means we have access to it early on in the game with the amount of cycle that we have. We have mail to try and get into it, stuff like that. Um, it means that we can go for the double Shaman, find ourselves or Anguru, draw as many cards as possible, and then when the opponent is forced to replace the stadium, we can wipe our own Shamans off the board and just keep the Persimians there along with Mew. Um, so hopefully the opponent has to go through an all non-EX deck. It's a pretty powerful thing for us and um, it makes life very awkward for the opponent. Finally, just for double colorless energy, the whole deck runs off of this. The only attack we use really is um, Persimians, so of course we need the 4 DCE. So I'm actually going to um, shuffle up and show off some turn one dummy hands with this deck because um, in my early testing it is just so consistent at doing what it wants to do um, that it's just a lot of fun to just do turn one dummy hands. I mean it's not crazy to do 130 on the first turn but in the current format there's nothing really that can do that outside of maybe Volcanion with a bunch of steam ups or if you hit a crazy amount of max elixirs. Obviously, there's a few Max Elixir decks out there right now. There's going to be the new Aqua Box that Jack's profiling. Uh, and there's Yveltal builds which use Max Elixirs. But it's rare that you can consistently hit 130 turn 1. And this is where this deck may shine. Just because it's going to be very aggressive. And can frequently get these sorts of numbers on the first turn. And that sort of aggressiveness is going to be really an awkward for evolution style decks. Where you pretty much just carve through their lower forms for a few turns. Take some easy prizes here and there. And by the time they've stabilized, already a few prizes ahead. So um, this feels like a pretty powerful deck in my opinion. It doesn't feel broken or anything. It's not like the new Night March. I think it's going to be only ever mid-tier. I don't think it's ever going to be a top-tier threat. But um, if people are trying to get greedy and have some of these newer decks, this is going to be great for just keeping them in check. So early on in a format, it's just good to have an aggressive style list because... Um, anyone trying to get too clever, trying to do big wombo combos, like if they're trying to play Solgaleo, Lunala, stuff like that, you can really punish them just by being aggressive and um, taking prizes early before they get anything going. So let's try and have a few open hands and see what happens here, uh, because I think this is a pretty consistent list. Uh, we have Mulliganed. It's pretty common to Mulligan, actually. Only 10 basic Pokemon. Um, so yeah, the changes I'm thinking right now, Pokemon Ranger is a card that I'm not playing, um, it helps you out more against Jolteon, although we do have the escape rope that we can spam with puzzles. Um, but really, it's Giratina. I think Giratina is pretty much a ghost in the format right now. It's pretty much nowhere to be seen. Um, so with that being the case, I don't think we need Ranger. But if ever he creeps back into the format, he may be necessary to help protect us from that. Um, 
Also, the Balloons, I've already mentioned, are a big part of this deck. And also the Third Shaman is a big debate I'm having right now. But other than that, I feel pretty confident with the list. I think it's pretty standard. Um, Professor Kikui is also a one-off supporter that I've debated here and there. I don't think there's many numbers that it helps out with, but sometimes it's just a decent option. So, okay, we have started with a brilliant hand, as always. We have the Mew to start out. I'll put some prizes down. And uh, we'll get going here. We've drawn for turn. And first things first, we'll just go for Nest Ball straight away. Get ourselves a Persimian that we can go for the bench. Let's quickly look for our prizes. Uh, basically the Shaman count, and you want to check your Persimian count, obviously. And looks like they're all in deck, so that's good news. This guy goes immediately to the bench. Hopefully I have enough space for all this stuff. I need to just check how far forward I can go with this Mew. And you guys can still see it. So, that's straight on the bench. We can now go for Trainer's Mail. And we can grab ourselves, I think it's fine just to go for Skyfield here. We have quite a clean Sycamore. So we'll just grab the Skyfield, put that into play, which means we can put down our other two Pokemon. We can attach the DCE to the active, and we can Oranguru for one card. It's going to be another Mew, we may as well put it down, and then we'll just Sycamore. So we actually have double puzzle in our hand now, which is gross. Okay, we can go for Acro Bike here. We can discard either of these cards. I'm just going to then Ultra Ball away the Fury Belt and the Mew. And we can just go ahead and grab um, Shaman X. We do have the Double Puzzle, which can get us guaranteed Double Persimian. Um, but it's kind of, you don't really want to spend puzzles early on on uh, Persimians unless I absolutely need to. Um, obviously, we could just grab things like Nest Ball and stuff to get there. But for now, we're just going to do a Soft Shaman for two cards and see where that gets us. Hopefully it gets us into a ball search card. Looks like it's pretty dead here. Uh, because we have the special charge in hand, we'll just go for the turn one. Uh, guarantee it quickly. We'll just grab the Nest Ball and the Ultra. Ultra can get rid of uh, the DCE and the Fury Belt. That seems absolutely fine to me. Uh, we could just go even more aggressive and go for Shaman here and have more of a hand, but I'm happy with just Sycamore special charge, to be honest. If that's my turn two play, that seems really strong. So Ultra Ball gets us Persimian. And then the Nest Ball gets us the last Persimian as well. So, game one, we get ourselves the 130 with our four Persimian on bench attacking with Mew. And we have the backup play of special charging um, back, probably two DCE. Uh, we can bring up our other Mew and then just a clean Sycamore. Hopefully, we get into um, another DCE. So, yeah, that's a pretty clean turn one. And uh, I'll shuffle up again and do this only a couple more times. But you get the picture of how quickly... And how easy it is to maintain this it's really not difficult to get a hand like that working just so many ball search cards we only saw two ball search cards in that first turn um but we did have more dig potential if we had to um just kind of awkward that we drew into double puzzle so early on but that's what happens when you're trying to dig as aggressively as possible uh we also didn't manage to get teammates into the discard pile um that is also a pretty nice thing to have that's kind of why we play two. You only really need to spam one, but getting one in the discard is just making all your VS Seekers live. So if you're able to discard a teammates in your opening uh, turn one, it's just going to be so much better for you throughout the game because that's the key supporter really for this deck. Once you've used your turn one Sycamore, which is really what you look to do, um, from there you feel very, very comfortable by using teammates pretty much every turn because... We have so much cycle and we can discard so many cards from our deck that we get down to a very thin deck size by the time we're at the end game situation. You can have a deck size of like six or seven cards and they're all just outs. They're just acro bikes or trainers mails or VS seekers. So that's what's really cool about this deck in testing. It just thins itself really quickly. You have Oranguru Guru anyway. You're normally targeting um, Garbodors regardless. So Oranguru works and so that your Muse are online. So it feels very safe and content to go for the long game approach with a deck that is pretty much full of outs. So, okay, let's have another opening hand. There's a mulligan and uh, we'll shuffle up again. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this deck. Can Persimian compete in the current format? Is he just a little bit too low on the power level? Is there going to be too many max potion style high HP decks? Um, that are just going to carve through you. I'm not sure if one Hex Maniac is going to be enough to beat out things like, um, what's it called, Decidueye as well. That could sometimes be a pain. Another Mulligan. 
which is fortunate because that was a pretty grim hand. That was just all supporters. Um, but we will uh, crack on. Another thing that you have to remember is um, if you play a single puzzle with this deck, you can do your double puzzle plays and you can puzzle back like just DCE and then your third puzzle that's already in the discard pile. So you can guarantee um, all your puzzles. I think it is very important to get use out of all your puzzles properly in this deck. Uh, I know in our first game we didn't really do that. We just spent them on Ultra Ball and stuff. But um, really it is quite important to do that. And I'm just trying to show off the potential of getting a turn one there'll be games when you really don't have to go for 130 turn one but regardless so here we go we started shaman so one of the things we're gonna have to find is either rope or floatstone that's gonna make things a little bit more awkward for us um but we can crack on here i'm just gonna discard the special charge in the end straight away uh it's not too bad putting that in the discard pile it's not a big problem to be honest uh, let's count our persimians and see what's going on looks like i think we prized one so 100 damage is going to be our baseline, as long as we attack with the Mew. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to double Ultra Ball here. Go for Mew and Shaman. So we'll just discard uh, everything. Keep our VS Seeker for the end. And uh, only one Shaman in this game is going to be a problem. This is kind of why you want to play third Shaman sometimes, because starting with one means you only really have one big setup. So it's going to be interesting to see how well we do here off of this. Potentially as well, I could have discarded the VS Seeker, kept the puzzle, used single puzzle, and got a clean six cards. Um, but I don't think that's too strong. I'd rather just guarantee a supporter for next turn, so or for this turn, I should say. And uh, we are then going to go for Acrobike. We can discard Ultra Ball, go for Nest Ball. So we've got ourselves two Persimian down, no Skyfield just yet, so we have to bear that in mind. Obviously, we have prized one, so it's not too big of an issue, but here we go. Nest Ball and one from hand. So we're two away. We can just fear about up a couple of things. And we'll VS Seek for the end. And uh, play that, get fresh six. We still need to find ourselves a way of moving. Obviously DC is an option, um, but you wanna be attacking, not just uh, not just going for Sky Return. That's not the kind of pressure that we look for. So uh, we'll see what we can do here and how it goes. But double Fury Belt on turn one isn't bad either. It's gonna be pretty tanky. I could have put both onto the Persimians. It really doesn't matter too much, but uh, we'll just see here. Ah, we have got it. We've got uh, the Floatstone. This Acrobike has to get us a Ball Search card if we want to get the Dream. Uh, looks like we whiffed. We'll just discard that. So um, this time we only do... How much are we doing? We're doing only 70 damage, which isn't great. <laughs> Actually, it's 80 because of Fury Bell. Um... So yeah, that's not ideal, but we do have the teammates for the following turns and we can probably get into some cycle anyway. So we'll have one more shuffle up and go. That just shows that um, maybe third Shaman is potential there because uh, we did discard an Ultra Ball on the way and chose a Nest Ball instead. Um, that's really because we had both our Shamans had been played. So um, there was no real reason to cycle. Um, additionally, it's important for us to try and find town map in those sorts of situations. Only doing 80 turn 1. Sometimes 80 is enough. 80 is going to put you into a 2 hit KO range if you can find your next Persimian the following turn. Um, a lot of the time. And also it's going to be able to 1 hit KO all the lower HP things that people play. Uh, like Fomantis and um, Cosmog and all these other things. So um, Even stuff like 80 turn 1. That's not too shabby at all. Like If Volcanium players do 80 turn 1, they're pretty chuffed with themselves. So... Um, even that's a decent amount of output and we had a decent board state again we had a support of follow-up for the next turn stuff like that so uh, not too bad we will uh, try and shuffle up again and see what we can do for the third and final time and then i will leave you to it uh, but hopefully this has just shown um, a quick demonstration on uh, how the deck tries to function it's basically just trying to get turn one lots of pokemon into play and uh, from there just maintain it just maintain it with uh, teammates a lot of the time so this time we started with Persimian and uh, oh, use the top deck that's a shame uh, so we can I think I'm gonna get the nest ball first and we'll count up Persimian okay they're all in here Shaman's not prized either so we will just grab this 
So off his Acrobike, the dream would be probably Ultra Ball, because we can thin ourselves out of Lysander and draw more cards. So we'll see what this Acrobike brings us. Uh, here is going to be the Acro. Teammates is definitely getting discarded. We'll just then go for the a nest ball, so that's three Persimian in play straight away. Haven't even used supporter yet. Um, if we attach the Fury Belt to the active, it means that we are pretty much saying that we need to find escape rope to attack with Mew. Uh, I'm not too happy with that. I prefer to go for the full damage, so we're just going to Fury Belt up the bench. I'm going to set up for four cards. So there is the DCEs now. Uh, we also have Trainer's Mail again. I'm going to look for that Ultra Ball if possible. There is escape rope, which is really tempting. Let's just take the rope, I think. Uh, the rope is the same as getting that uh, nest ball there in terms of damage, because um, roping now means that we go into the Mew, and that's essentially an extra Persimmon on the bench, because, you know, it's physically going to the bench now. So we can just attach the DCE, and then we can go for the end there. And uh, again, pretty good start. We're doing um, 90 this turn. No, sorry, 100 already. Uh, still got our supporter to go. We'll see what N gives us. Uh, if we can get that final ball search card. We've only used one Shaman so far. We have the open bench slot. Haven't had to find Skyfield just yet. So this is all looking pretty good. But we'll see what we can do here. And we have lots of Ultra Ball. So we can just go ahead and grab ourselves that last um, Persimian here. We'll just Ultra Ball keep again. The double VS Seeker hand seems very, very strong. Especially when we've just gone and put a, uh, teammates into the ditch. So... There we go, another turn one where we do a decent amount of output on the very first turn. So you can see that this is very consistent at getting the turn one. Um, good chunk of damage, looking between that 100 and 130 baseline is going to be really nice for this deck. And then just maintaining that, again, I keep going back to teammates, keep going back to Sycamore and Puzzles. These are the things that you can just manage your resources quite comfortably with this deck. The whole deck is full of cycles, so even getting hit with ends and stuff isn't too painful especially with Oranguru. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this deck. I don't think many people have been discussing it in great detail, uh, but I'm a huge fan of this list because I've been doing a lot of dummy hands and a lot of practice games in the Sun and Moon format right now. And uh, it's been a whole lot of fun. Another quick note, if you want to have a much better time against Lorantis Valplume, you can play one or two Tauros. Tauros is obviously a slow card. It's not going to help you in the turn one cycle. Um, but it means that they can't really do anything to you as the, as the Valplume Lurantis player because um, if they, because of the 180 HP that Tauros has, it's just really awkward for Lurantis to play around that. They normally have to spend their entire GX attack trying to do that, and that takes a whole bunch of turns. If they don't use their GX attack, um, you're just going to be there poking away for like 70 a turn with its first attack on the Tauros, and you're going to be setting it up making it a lot easier for you to overcome it with the Persimians. So I think if Lurantis Plume becomes more and more popular, you might have to consider putting Tauros in this list. Uh, for now, though, I just wanted to show the baseline, the standard list that's just going to be very simple and get set up every time. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the deck and uh, any more Sun and Moon things in store. Uh, for now, though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke, and I will see you guys next time.